hello and welcome back. In this Black Excellence presentation, we will highlight Nathan Nearest Green, the first African-American master distiller. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we share Black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. For years, the prevailing history of American whiskey has been framed as a lily-white affair, centered on German and Scots-Irish settlers who distilled their surplus grains into whiskey and sent it to far-off markets, eventually creating a $3 billion industry and a product equally beloved by Kentucky colonels and Brooklyn hipsters. Left out of history books and historical accounts are men like Nathan Nearest Green, who provided more than just physical labor. Enslaved men not only made up a significant portion of the distilling workforce, but they often provided the expertise or provided crucial roles in the whiskey making process. In the same way that white rock and roll stars, inventors, and cookbook authors often appropriated music, innovations, and recipes from enslaved black people, white distillery owners took credit for the whiskey and the billion dollar process that it relies on today. There were many other men and women like Nearest Green scattered around the South who were not given their just due for the contributions they made. Thus, we want to give acknowledgement and celebrate these black Americans who are not given nearly enough attention and credit for their ingenuity. In this original Black Excellence video, we will be featuring Uncle Nearest, mentor and teacher to Jack Daniels. So without further ado, let's get started. One, Nearest Green was born in Maryland, but became a master distiller in Tennessee. Nathan Nearest Green was born in Maryland around 1820. Known as Uncle Nearest by his family and friends in his hometown of Lynchburg, Tennessee, he played the fiddle and was a lively entertainer. Green married Harriet Green, and they had 11 children together, nine sons and two daughters. It is not known whether Green was born into slavery or later became enslaved, but documentation shows that he was owned by a firm known as Landis and Green, who likely hired him out for a fee. Around the mid-1800s, he began working on a farm owned by a country preacher and grocer in Lincoln County named Dan Call. Dan Call also owned a whiskey distillery on his 380-acre property. Call promoted Nearest to the position of head stiller, commonly referred to as the master distiller. Slavery ended after the Civil War and the ratification of the 13th Amendment in 1865. However, Green was one of a few enslaved people who decided he would stay on to work at Dan Call's distillery for a year or two after the Emancipation Proclamation. Two, Green innovated the Lincoln County process of making Tennessee whiskey. Nearest was a skilled distiller, specializing in a process that gave his whiskey a unique smoothness, known as sugar maple charcoal filtering. It is believed by many whiskey and food historians to have been brought in by slaves who were already using charcoal to filter their water and purify their foods in West Africa. African slaves adapted their own traditions of alcohol production, going back to the corn beer and fruit spirits of West Africa. Africans made alcohol illicitly while in slavery, and Nearest probably would have drawn on generations of liquor-making skills. This process became known as the Lincoln County Process, named after the county that Nearest called home. The Lincoln County process to filter new make whiskey before aging is one of the things that makes Tennessee whiskey so unique. Today, the technique has evolved into slightly different tactics, but one of the most popular involves charcoal that is made on site using unaged distillate as a fire starter on sugar maple staves. Those staves are then ground into chunks that are used to make a 10-foot deep filter bed. New make distillate is dripped through the filter bed using gravity, a process that requires over a week to complete. Three, Green became a mentor to Jasper Daniel and trained him on distilling. Sometime in the 1850s, an eight-year-old boy arrived at a farm looking for work. The young poor boy was the 10th child in his family and lost his mom to a sudden illness at the age of four months. The Lutheran minister hired him on as a chore boy who would milk cows and serve as a farmhand. The young man's name was Jasper Newton Daniel, also known as Jack Daniel. The wealthy farm owner, Dan Call, saw promise in the young Jack Daniel. After some time of working as a chore boy, the preacher agreed to give in to the boy's curiosity around the smoke coming from the whiskey still. One day he gave in and decided to show him the whiskey still. 
and he would eventually teach Jack Daniel how to run it. When introducing Jack Daniel to his top distiller, Nearest Green, the minister, is quoted saying, Uncle Nearest is the best whiskey maker that I know of. Dan Call reportedly said to Green, I want you to teach him everything that you know. Green, already adept at distilling, took Daniel under his wing, and as years went by, the young Daniel continued learning from Nearest. 4. Jack Daniel would sell his own whiskey that Uncle Nearest taught him to make. Jack Daniel became old enough to begin selling this unique whiskey that Nearest taught him to make in other towns near Lynchburg. He sold his sweet-tasting whiskey to soldiers during the Civil War and developed into a very astute salesperson and entrepreneur. Daniel's whiskey made using Nearest's special process quickly became the most popular in the area. Years later, the Reverend was called to make a serious decision, choose his church congregation or the whiskey business. He had already entered into a partnership with Jack Daniel on the steel, but with age also playing a major factor, he chose to stay with the ministry and sold off his stake in the distillery to the young boy turned businessman. Jack Daniel would rename the distillery after himself and ask Nearest to be his first master distiller, an extraordinary request for such a time and place. Shortly thereafter, Jack Daniel moved from the property and took his growing whiskey business with him. This was shortly after the Civil War when Uncle Nearest was a freed man, but he had made the decision to retire from distilling. Therefore, he decided not to go to Daniel's new distillery. However, his sons, Louis, Eli, and George, continued to work at Daniel's fledging whiskey operation to continue the tradition of making the best whiskey in the area, but would do so under the name of Jack Daniel. Jack Daniel, with the assistance of the Green Boys, would grow into a brilliant businessman who went on to become the most famous whiskey maker in the world. 5. Vaughn Weaver took interest in researching and rewriting Uncle Nearest's story. New York Times best-selling author Vaughn Weaver was on vacation in Singapore in 2016 when she first read about Nathan Nearest Green. She was reading an international edition of the New York Times when a headline caught her eye. Jack Daniel embraces a hidden ingredient, help from a slave. The article featured a slave from Tennessee who taught Jack Daniel how to make whiskey. Like many celebrated brands in America, Weaver was amazed that Jack Daniel's too was created from the blood, sweat, and tears of a slave. But she felt like this story was different because it may be possible that the African American who had a significant role actually had a name and this person could be pinpointed. Weaver took those words as a challenge. After reading the time story, Weaver decided to dedicate the next two years to filling in the gaps and finding definitive proof of Nearest Green's impact. Vaughn made a pilgrimage to Lynchburg in search of the history and heritage of Nearest Green. But when she arrived in Lynchburg, she found no trace of Green. Even after taking three hours at the Jack Daniels distillery, there was no mention of Uncle Nearest, the man who taught Jack Daniel the craft of whiskey distilling. In her search, Weaver interviewed more than 100 people connected to Green's story, including his 106-year-old granddaughter and other descendants of Green. The Green family was excited to hear that someone was bringing to light all of this information about Nearest Green. Weaver was able to eventually draft a timeline of Green's relationship with Jack Daniel, showing how Green not only taught the Whiskey Baron how to distill, but had also worked for him after the Civil War. By her account, she has collected 10,000 documents and artifacts related to Daniel and Green, much of which she has agreed to donate to the new National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. Six. The Weavers purchased the 300-acre farm that Uncle Nearest once worked. Through her comprehensive research, Weaver was able to locate the farm where Uncle Nearest and Jack Daniel first met and worked together distilling. Vaughn and her husband, Keith, purchased 313 acres of the farm, once owned by wealthy farmer and minister Dan Call. The site was also home to the original Jack Daniel's distillery, a two-room cabin where Green lived during the Civil War, and a Greek rival home where Call and Daniel once lived are also being rebuilt. The Weavers were able to restore the farmhouse back in its 19th century appearance. 
They maintain the house as a private historic site that is not open to the public, but is open to guests of the Uncle Nearest brand. The Weavers transformed a horse training center in Shelbyville, Tennessee into the nearest green distillery, which the Weavers hope will afford a permanence to Green's name in the annals of American whiskey. The distillery offers whiskey tastings, site tours, as well as weekly founders tour experience. Site tours include a walk through the single barrel warehouse and tasting room, as well as Heritage Hall. The Heritage Hall is an impressive collection of all things invented in Tennessee, with a special focus on Tennessee whiskey, walking horses, and country music. The Weavers also purchased a four-acre parcel in the center of Lynchburg that she intends to turn into a memorial park. Weaver launched the Nearest Green Foundation, an organization dedicated to honoring Green's involvement in the Tennessee whiskey industry. The organization works to not only amplify Green's story, but to also highlight a much larger and mostly undocumented relationship between slavery and whiskey distilling in Tennessee. Weaver, through the foundation, hopes to highlight that untold story. Projects that are currently in the pipeline for the foundation include a museum in Lynchburg dedicated to the history of Tennessee whiskey. Another vital effort includes the construction of Nearest Green Memorial Park in Lynchburg. A scholarship fund is in the works to benefit Green's direct descendants. Lastly, Weaver now owns the rights to Green's biography and is planning to write a book honoring the life and legacy of Nathan Nearest Green. Seven, Uncle Nearest Premium Whiskey is inspired by the Black Master Distiller. Uncle Nearest 1856 Whiskey was formed to honor and pay tribute to the legacy and craft of Nathan Nearest Green. When Fawn met with the descendants of George Green, the son most known for helping his father and Jack Daniel in the whiskey business, she asked them for their thoughts on the best way to honor Nearest. They responded that putting his name on a bottle would best let people know he did. Today, Uncle Nearest Premium Whiskey is inspired by the best whiskey maker the world never knew, the first known African-American master distiller, Nathan Nearest Green. The Uncle Nearest brand, wholly owned by Uncle Nearest Inc., is an all-minority-led business that encompasses a premium age whiskey with a blend of 8 to 14-year-old, an 11-year-old minimum age single barrel, and a 7-year-old small batch offering. All is mellowed using the Lincoln County process, the unique filtering of bourbon through sugar maple charcoal. The company built its brand on its knack for sourcing the best of Tennessee whiskeys and bourbons and using its own non-temperature controlled aging process. The brand also leverages its unique post-aging double filtration method that significantly changes the characteristics and profile of the original whiskeys. Furthermore, Uncle Nearest is distilled, aged, bottled, and hand-labeled in Tennessee. Uncle Nearest is the most awarded new American premium whiskey brand in United States history, garnering 75 awards since its July 2017 debut, including being one of two brands named World Best at Whiskey Magazine's 2019 World Whiskies Awards and earning 15 Best in Class. Cigar and Spirits Magazine also named Uncle Nearest one of the top five whiskeys in the world. The whiskey is currently available in all 50 states and 12 countries while shipping into a total of 148 countries. It is on the shelves of more than 10,000 stores, bars, restaurants, and its 270-acre distillery in Shelbyville, Tennessee is dubbed by a member of the press as Malt Disney World. 8. New evidence points to slaves distilling at a number of Kentucky sites. There should be a larger effort to tie what little is known about Nearest Green to the larger erasure of the role of enslaved people in American whiskey making. It is indeed easier said than done, but there is certainly more to the story that both Times and the Weavers have been able to uncover. Whiskey historians are now slowly and reluctantly recognizing the influence of enslaved African distillers in the mountains of Tennessee and hills of Kentucky. Though slave owners tend to value their slaves' distilling prowess, they rarely documented how the slaves made such fine spirits. 
evidence often has to be found outside the archives and is rarely spoken about and almost never recognized in the rural all-white communities. Recent archaeological work in Kentucky has uncovered material pointing to slave distilling at a number of sites, including the famed Pepper Distillery near Frankfurt and another operation owned by Jack Jewett, a revolutionary war hero. Many whiskey historians have conceded that a full accounting of enslaved people's contribution to American whiskey may never be found, simply because it was never written. It is another sad tragedy in American history where major contributors will never get the credit they deserve and will likely never ever be named. This is certainly the case of the enslaved black distillers. 9. Jack Daniel finally credits Green and incorporates his role into their story. Back in 1866, Jack Daniels became the first registered distillery in the United States. Today, it's the top-selling American whiskey in the world. For much of the brand's 150-plus years, the story went that the young Jack Daniel learned his trade from a pastor named Dan Call. In reality, he was taught to distill by an enslaved African. Every year, about 275,000 people tour the Jack Daniels distillery, and as they stroll through its brick buildings nestled in a tree-shaded hollow, they hear a story that is void of the contributions of Uncle Nearest. Green's existence had long been an open secret, but not one that was embraced by Jack Daniel Distillery. However, in 2016, the company that now owns the Jack Daniel Distillery, which is Brown Furman, made international headlines with its decision to finally embrace Green's legacy and significantly change its tours to emphasize his role. Jack Daniel has begun to celebrate tentatively near his contributions in some of its tours, social media, and marketing campaigns. Weaver helped Jack Daniels put together a Nearest Green exhibit, which consists of a map of the Dan Call Farm, a short history of Nearest's relationship with Daniel, photos of his descendants, and a wall-sized family tree placed in the lobby of the visitor's center. 10. Nearest Green Distillery and Jack Daniel Distillery pledged $5 million to diversity. Amid increasingly vocal national anti-racism demonstrations and demands for equality action, the Jack Daniel Distillery and Nearest Green Distillery have announced a joint three-pronged initiative aimed at increasing diversity in the American whiskey industry. The two Tennessee whiskey makers have pledged a combined $5 million as part of the Nearest and Jack Advance initiative. The Jack Daniel Distillery has begun highlighting Green's contributions to visitors, but the Nearest and Jack Advancement Initiative marks the first official collaboration between the two companies. Among the initiative's many actions is the creation of the Nearest Green School of Distilling at Motlow State Community College in Tullahoma, Tennessee. This initiative will help create a pipeline to have more women and people of color in master distiller roles throughout the industry. Another element of the initiative is the Leadership Acceleration Program, which will offer apprenticeships specifically to African Americans already in the whiskey industry, with aspirations of becoming a head distiller or holding other significant roles. The Business Incubation Program will offer African American entrepreneurs mentorship in all areas of the distilling business. The Nearest and Jack Advancement Initiative is among a wider movement to enhance diversity throughout the spirits industry. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.